Well, I'd like to look into another topic in our 25th video on analyzing extreme fundamentalism. Uh, this one has to deal with a topic that I would entitle soul winning, something familiar if you're in these churches. It's something that's pushed very hard, something I'd like to try to look at and define and to determine uh, are they, do they have a basis for demanding such things on the people of God. Uh, in most churches, this is a test of orthodoxy. Uh, usually there is a time, some evening, a Thursday evening, perhaps that's when we usually went, or a Saturday morning when a person was somewhat expected to be there. To, If you wanted to be one of the, the uh, more spiritual type people in the church, you were, you were expected to be at the soul winning. Uh, where you would go out, you go door to door, you would share the Romans Road, maybe give something out, a track for the church, invite people to church, things like that. Uh, I mentioned in one of the other videos, a, a relative of mine uh, used to teach in a Christian school of an extreme fundamentalist church, and they had Thursday night soul winning, and this individual decided that because the particular ladies group became more of a social club than an actual evangelism uh, tool on Thursday nights uh, that she decided that she was better off going to, uh, separately with somebody else. That was not acceptable. This lady was removed from the school and her teaching position. She lost her job because of this. So uh, it, some, some take it extremely seriously. You know, this idea of taking time aside and going door to door and doing that on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, and having a soul winning. And if your church doesn't do that, then you're not considered an evangelistic church, you're not considered a biblical church. Uh, I, I, I believe that that is a, a real issue, a real problem in some of these hyper-fundamentalist churches. And what they do is they're placing uh, something on the church, a burden on the church, just like the Pharisees did, placing something on the church, a burden that is unnecessary and harmful. And to some people, it's actually destructive. You know, the pressure that was on when I was a student at Hiles Anderson, especially as, a, as married students, and uh, I, I had left, I had, already, I, had, I had two children and left uh, the, the college and finished somewhere else, but there were men there who had families, and because of the extreme pressure that spent hours and hours out soul winning, uh, they, their families were, were destroyed. My family, because of the, the attitude that I, that I had towards this, you know, of constantly doing these things, uh, or I wasn't evangelistic, I wasn't serving the Lord, uh, my family suffered because of that as well. You know, so uh, I think it's something that I, I don't believe. I, th I believe that it's a good thing to do that. There's not a problem with that. I am not against that. I've done it, and I still do it as I'm able. But to make demands on people is the problem. Now, if you're in a church that is making a demand on you on this, uh, then I, I believe that you may need to find another church. Uh, the uh, idea that, that uh, you have to do your evangelism in a particular method that, that is prescribed by the church, I think is wrong. Now, there are examples in the Bible where people go door to door and share their faith. That's fine. The book of Acts is full of that. You'll go through, you'll see them doing that. They went to the synagogue, they went in the public forum, they went door to door. There are many different things you can do, but that's not always possible. You know, if you tried to do that in Saudi Arabia, for example, well, you might lose your head. You do that in China, you'll end up in prison. You know, so there are, there are limits to what we can do physically. You have, things are done underground, they're done secretly. Uh, they're, uh, they're, I read of a story once, of a, uh, this is back in the Iron Curtain days of, 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 of Eastern Europe, where a girl wanted to share the gospel. She would write the gospel on a note. She'd write uh, things about Jesus on a note, and she would drop them from her window, and someone would pick them up as they walked by. That was the best that they could do without going to prison. And so there are certain limitations in some cultures. There's other limitations that you'll run into. You, know, you may be in a church, as, as our church was. We have Today we have more younger people. But whenever I first started at the church, there was mostly older people in the church. They have limitations. They can't uh, go outdoors. Or some of them are, are in walkers. So you can't expect... A group of, of people that are older like that to be able to spend hour upon hour going up and down steps knocking on doors there's limitations physically there's also limitations on work schedules you know some people have to work two jobs 
Some people have a, a very difficult time with their schedules, so they're not able to go out as much as they would like and to do those things. And even when you do, what you're finding now is that it's harder and harder to find people at home. You know, it used to be that, that if you're going during the day, there'd at least be the, the mother home uh, with, the, with the kids or whatever, but culture's changed. You know, it's not the 1950s anymore. And so the wife will be gone, the husband will be gone. You might see a kid or two sometimes. Uh, sometimes you'll catch people, sometimes you don't. Now, of course, you can always leave something in the door. You know, that's what we, we do whenever we, we would do something like this. But the culture uh, may, may not be compatible with that particular method of soul winning. Now, again, I'm not condemning the practice at all. I think I would love for our church to be able to do more, but because of the limitations, uh, we're not able to. Now, we have deacons that, that do some visiting on a regular basis that uh, they'll go and they'll, they'll visit folks that need a visit. Uh, we try to go out and do evangelism. We've done evangelism at county fairs where people are walking in and out. Uh, we, we've done that before. But again, because of limitations, I myself as a pastor, I have to work a full-time job. Our, our church is a small church. Our church is limited financially. So I, I have to work. I'm not able to organize and go out like I would like to. Uh, so what we, we've done in place of that is that we put together a newsletter. Now, uh, this is something I learned in a previous church uh, that uh, if you could see that there, this we sent out to uh, all, the, all the homes within driving distance of our church. We are in a rural area. There's a town on one end of the church, another town on another end. We have towns surrounding us, but we're in the middle of a of, of farm area. We have several farms along the way, so uh, we can't just go out from our church and just start you know, going door to door. We can't walk on the rural, rural roads and be able to, to talk to people uh, house to house. It would be one thing very dangerous to do that with, with the roads the way they are around here. Uh, but we could go to the local towns and do that, but we found ourselves limited, so we sent out these. Now, inside of these, these news on the outside, we have life's questions. And some of these questions are, where did I come from? We, we talk about the issue of, God, of God's creating us. Uh, is there life after death? What sets the Bible apart from other holy books? Holy in, in parentheses. Who is Jesus Christ? And why is it so important that I know him? Does the Bible address today's important issues? And then you open this up. And we have those questions that we, we attempt to answer over here. And then in, in the center, uh, this, this was an evangelist we had at our church from Great Britain. He, is, uh, he, he helped us out in the first several years of the church. Now he's retired, physically unable to come any longer. We have a, a section about the church, about the pastor, which is me. And then on the other end, we have what does it mean to be born again? So all of this we'd send to every single house within driving distance of our church. Thousands of these we sent out. So the gospel was in the mailboxes of all these homes. So we weren't able to knock on the doors of these churches. It cost us thousands of dollars to do that, to have it printed and have it mailed. But uh, we found that it was well worth it, that the, we, we were able to, in some way, share our faith, that despite the limited means. We had enough money in the bank to be able to do that. It took several mailings. It took several months, a couple of years actually, and before we actually covered all of these these different towns. And I think it might have been twelve to to, to fifteen thousand of these newsletters that we sent out overall. In some places, we actually sent them twice. So uh, this is just a simply another method to make up for the fact that we are limited in knocking on doors. Uh, so. Uh, in looking at this particular issue, nobody has the right to make a demand on you, the Christian, that you must use this particular method in sharing your faith in Christ. That if you don't go door to door, you put your white shirt and tie on or whatever you do to, to go and you give a particular presentation to an individual of the Romans Road or whatever, that you must do it this way. That person is being pharisaical and making demands on you that are not in the scriptures. Nobody can make a demand on you 
uh, that is apart from the Word of God itself. Now they can say this is what the, what they did in the Bible, the example we have in Acts, we can emulate that, but we're going to find the cultures are different. So we may not be able to. We may not be physically able to do these, but we can find ways to share our faith. And we should. We know that we should go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we send out missionaries. We send out newsletters. We, as individuals, talk to our friends, our family, the people we work with as the opportunity comes up. And as we have opportunity, we can go door to door. We can go into the public forum and preach or share our faith and give out tracts. But to make demands on people to be at a certain spot at a certain time and doing a certain thing in a certain way is not biblical. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. We can discuss this. Uh, and again, thank you for your time.